This taste is still happening, man. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, what's going on, everybody? For First We Feast, I'm Sean Evans, and you're watching Hot Ones. It's the show with hot questions and even hotter wings. And today we're joined by Daniel Kaluuya. He's an Academy Award-winning actor you know from acclaimed performances in films like Black Panther, Get Out, Judas and the Black Messiah, and many more. His latest project, though, is the Jordan Peele written and directed sci-fi horror film, Note, which is set to theaters on July 22nd. Daniel Kaluuya, welcome to the show. Man, thanks for having me, man. What's going through your head as you prepare to take on the wings of death today? Winning, success, victory. A little bit of fear, I'm not even lying to you. Two bites, yeah? Yeah, we'll go two hey, bites. Hey, I'm fucked up already, bro. <laughs> I'm nervous, you know what I mean? But I've got this. What's going on? I mean, it's cool. <laughs> I have the whole wing. There you go. See if you can keep it going. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's all good though. So in all my years of doing this show, this interview with you for Nope is one of the first times that I've actually been dying to actually see the screener, but respect to everyone involved for keeping it such a tight lip production. Yeah. Do you think that there's anything uniquely evocative about a horror film like Nope, which is set oftentimes with the most chilling action happening during daylight hours with the sun still up? Yeah, because um, you can see things when the sun's up. That's that's what's really been interesting about this process. It's like, when it's dark, you can't look up in the sky and see what, I mean, I can't really spoil it, but <laughs> he found a way to bring fear into the light, essentially, which I thought was pretty special. I'm easy, man. How you doing? I'm doing good. I'm yeah, doing cool. good so far. I can hang for at least a couple here. Just a Just couple. In. Are you ready to move on to this next one? This is the Adobo Loco Island Wing Sauce here in the two spot. All right, cool. Let's do it. I'm going to do two. I'm going to do two bites. <laughs> I'll be cautious now. Light work. It's <laughs> <laughs> gonna be a bad fool, will it? <laughs> I've seen many guests come in in that first half, you know, just doing victory laps already. You have to give yourself already. like you gotta gas the, yourself. Yeah, you, gotta you gotta gas, gas it, yourself. Cause that, that, this you, right? I know you, bro. You no. gotta be mentally prepared. Yeah, all good though. It's all jiggy. So I read that you wrote your first play inspired by the film Good Burger when you were only nine years old, but yeah. I'm actually more interested in this deep cut from Holly Hughes who said that you wrote a great piece about a pair of grime artists when you were just a teenager. What do you recall about that time at the Heat and Light Youth Company in Hempstead Theater? You're like Nardva. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned Holly Hughes. Uh, grime play, it was, about, it was called Real. It was called Real. I was just, I was just fascinated about grime. And at that time, because grime was peaking then. And then, um, and I just wanted to have, like, find a way to marry grime and theater um, during that time. So yeah, man, that was a, I haven't, I haven't thought about that play in ages, <laughs> so yeah. Which was a bigger thrill for you, winning a BAFTA or getting name-checked by Stormzy for winning a BAFTA? <laughs> the Stormzy name-check was pretty, because I was watching it. I was like, I'd watch, like, I like watching music performances. That's like one of my things. So I was in the house watching the Brits. And it was like, they were like, oh yeah, like, oh, Stormzy's gonna be at the end. I'm like, oh, for flip's sake, I'm gonna have to watch all of this <laughs> to watch the end. Like, so, get to the end and I'm watching it and he's like in the rain and he's going in. I'm like, oh, he's doing a freestyle, freestyle. And then I heard my name and I just fell out the chair. I fell out the chair. I was by myself, fell out the chair. And my phone went crazy. And I was like, yeah, that was, that was epic. Cause that, you can't buy that. Right. You can't, you, you just, that was epic. And that's always been a dream. You wanna be like name checked by rappers and like, that's cool, man. Do you know what I'm saying? So big up Stormzy for that, do you know what I mean? Mescaline, all right. <laughs> it, starts, it starts bubbling now, innit? <laughs> it's starting to bubble now. We're bubbling, but still going in. Yeah, man. Still going in. Come on, man. Nice wings, though. Where'd you get the wings from? 
You know what? These are amazing wings. Victoria, where we get these ones from? Just wing it. Just wing it. What's up? Just wing it. It's a you know it's a, there's not many places in Los Angeles that have wings available for delivery at 9 a.m. Mm -hmm. But they kind of just fall off the bone. Oh, that's good. It's wings. really nice. It's really succulent. Really strong. Like, yeah. Big up, just wing it, man. <laughs> yeah. So since watching Widows, one of the scenes that really sticks with me is the one of you in the gymnasium with the camera doing 360 degree loops around you and the characters played by Sir Michael Rocks and Chuck English of The Cool Kids. Yeah, they're legends. What would you say distinguishes Steve McQueen as a director? Because I understand that that approach, the idea to do the loops, wasn't even decided on until the day of the shoot. I think he's like, and I remember he even spoke about it, he, he wanted it to feel like a, a, a vinyl mm. a record that's going round and round and round and round and round and round. He's probably the only one other person has said something about my acting and I feel like, oh yeah, you're accurate. And then that, it was that day he described it. He came up to me and was like, you're weird. I'm like, yeah, I am. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, you're a weird actor. I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm really weird. Like, it's like, and he just, he just was really, um, even in that scene, he was like, he was doing a scene, he was like, intimidate them without touching them. But he would leave the figuring out to you, you know? But he knows how to talk to people and, very intuitive, very intuitive. What role did Beanie Siegel play as a creative oh, influence on your character in that bro, film? I get to say this out loud, <laughs> my guy. Beanie Siegel, yeah? That scene. You like yeah? that one? So when he said that, yeah, I love that one, bro. I tell you, you're like, Nardvot. Like, <laughs> like, I don't even know if I'm saying it right, but hey. Um, Beanie Siegel, so when I was younger, I was obsessed with worldstarhiphop.com. And there was a bit when Beanie Siegel was just on his shoulder while PD Crack was rapping and just looking at him. Like it's on his shoulder and camera looking at him, but he's not looking at camera, just looking at PD Crack, looking at PD Crack. And then like PD Crack's trying to rap, and I always remembered how awkward that was. And how thing, and that's how I kind of act. I just I take stuff in and I, I like looking at life and real life moments and go, how do you translate that into a film language? Like actually get reality. So then like when he said intimidate him without touching him, it just came, it just popped in. Like me watching it at 16 years old. When he disrespects your personal space, then what else can he disrespect? But yeah, Beanie Siegel inspired inspired me to that PD Crack. Shout out PD Crack and Beanie Siegel. <laughs> and my guys. Was it State Property? There the we good go. Old days, man. All right, cool. It's a nice font. So far, so good. Easy money. <laughs> Easy money. <laughs> You're about to wild out now. <laughs> I understand the demand on your vocal cords was particularly intense for your Oscar award winning performance as Fred Hampton and Judas and the Black Messiah. Yeah. Did you learn anything valuable about breath control or projection studying alongside a opera teacher for that film? Um, and I, I learned it on a couple plays, but I do it for the plays and then I forget about it because I'm not trained. I'm kind of self taught in that. So, like, just to engage with your diaphragm, like really engage with your diaphragm. But then when I get emotional or I get in the moment, I, I lose it. I can't. Like, but sometimes, it, like you got to be aware that you're doing that. So then you know, like, all right, cool. I, I wasted the bullet on that. My throat's gonna be. <laughs> when I did lose my voice in the tail end of the day, I was able to still convey what I wanted to convey for the crowd without actually having to speak at all. You know what I mean? And, it's, and you have to tap in. It, make, it taught me how to tap into that at the same time. But so yeah, that was a. It's a big learning curve for me and my voice. It was like an accelerated drama school, essentially. How you feeling after four? I'm feeling good, bro. How you feeling? I, you're looking good. I'm feeling on, good. Man, you know, We're in this do. together, on the climb, on the way up. Are you ready to move to the halfway point already? Yes, I am, my Yes. The seventh reaper Correct. here in the five spot. All right, cool. We'll be doing this, yeah? Come on, hold on. I took more than I was supposed to on that one, so I'm going to take that so? one back. I took all the skin from the back. Hey, my ears started to sweat. <laughs> Why is my ears sweating? My ears have never sweated before. What's going on? <laughs> Why can I feel my ears sweating? There'll bro? be a lot of firsts. There'll be a lot of firsts. No, I'm going to do two bites because I don't want all anyone right, to say anything. Two. There we go. I'm doing that. <laughs> and my ears are sweating now. It's one ear. It's just my left ear. <laughs> like, What's going on there? Shush. So when we had Idris Elba on the show, he gave me a crash course in Cockney rhyming slang, and then Charlie Sloth taught me all about chirps and birds. It's a legend. Charlie Sloth's from, from my area. Shout out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
What does it mean when someone from the UK says "ra"? It kind of sounds like when an American says "bet," but I can't quite figure it out. Raw, raw, raw is like I used to use it as "wow," like raw, like that happened raw, raw, like wow, like it's a mini wow, a mini wow, like, wow, but it's like a wow. Do you have a favorite British phrase for getting drunk? Last time I was in London, we were at a pub, and my friend's cousin kept talking about being goosed. Goosed. I had never goosed. heard that. Goosed. Waved. I like waved. I like waved. How would you use it in a sentence? Oh, last night I got waved, man. <laughs> waved. Waved. It's an ocean. You know what I'm saying? It was rocky. You know what I mean? It was like, yeah, waved. That's that first one that comes to mind. All right. Back halftime. The sixth spot, you're doing great, by the oh, way, man. I'm built for this, bro. You are built for I'm this. Built for this. I try to tell people I'm built for this. <laughs> so this next one, hot and saucy, collared and ghost. Cool. That one's starting to dance. My eyebrows starting to sweat now. <laughs> Joining the ears. Right in the ears, yeah, it's the right <laughs> eyebrow and the left ear. They're doing a the whole dance for themselves. So I'm interested in what I've heard you describe as accessible excellence with the goal yeah. of making films for the friends that you grew up with. Yeah. As an actor, how do you think about the balance between a film's high-minded thesis and then just the basic North Star of entertaining people first and foremost? It's like, what's it, Bob Marley? You want to you wanna say something so a baby can understand it. You know, and that's, I think it's a symptom of understanding if you say it simply. So that's my thing, it's like, oh, it's all good knowing all this stuff, but can you translate it? I'm gonna say it, I'm gonna say it, because I, I went to, oh, I'm gonna say it. Say I went it, to say someone's it. house, yeah? And they described it perfectly, yeah? And there's like an axis, yeah? Boom, bats, yeah? And they said, like, top here is simple, and bottom here is complicated. We're actually talking about two albums, I'm not gonna say whose albums it was. And here is normal, and here is special, right? And the beauty spot, is here, top right, mm. simple, special. I was like, it blew my mind. They said, yeah, that's why Michael Jackson's a genius. And I was like, why? Because she said, A, B, C, as easy as one, two, three. Or like Bob Marley says, no woman, no cry. Like, it's like, say it simply. And so that I want to translate that into cinema. And as you have to understand so much and understand the person you're speaking to in order to do that. If the film don't work, that's life, do you know what I'm saying? But at least I, I know, they know that I care and I, ooh, look at the details and they go, oh no, it didn't work, but this is that and the other. So that's how I see cinema. I see the audience. I want them to like have a good time because it's it's not cheap. I mean, going to the cinema. So I'd want that, yeah. Accessible excellence, it's a movement. The font's terrifying. I'm into fonts, but the font's terrifying. What, like, how do you pitch that in a sales meeting? <laughs> you say simple. Special. <laughs> Let me cast. <laughs> we good though. They're crushing those wings. We're probably approaching kind of the. That went into my nose though. Nose, eyebrows, the chicken ears. Just went, wait, 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 wait. What's happening here? Chill, chill, relax. It's all good. It's all good. My back of my neck is sweating though. And yeah. I don't know why it's sweating. Like the Everybody's coming to the party. Hey. Neck, eyebrows, it's, ears. It's, it's a happening. water party. I'm gonna give you some more. <laughs> oh. So aspiring actors create all different types of strategies when it comes to fueling their quest for stardom. But yours, I understand, is purely statistical, saying I have to get one job out of three. How did <laughs> yeah. you come up with that wow. math? And I understand that your production company, even 59%, is steeped in a real statistical measure, measure of success in sports. Yeah, one out, one out of three. I was cocky. And then 59%, that's based off Moneyball, because I'm obsessed oh. about that film, I'm obsessed about that book. And that's the win rate of that team, that one was 59%. And then like, and then I like, I can't, I'm gonna say this, but say it, say one it. of my favorite managers is a Man United manager, but I'm an Arsenal <laughs> guy. It's um, Alex Ferguson, Sir Alex Ferguson, got put some more respect on his name and that. How he responds to losses was always what spoke to me. Like he used the loss as a asset. All right, cool, I fucked up there. What am I gonna learn? All right, cool. Oh yeah, this, that's what happened. This is that, okay, I've got to make changes. It's the same principle as I did back in the day, is like one out of three. If, it's, if, I get, if I don't get three, all right, cool. I've got to look at myself, I've got to study, I've got to get myself up. And that's an opportunity to, to study up. 
to kind of get your skills and craft to a certain level so then that you can sustain the level you're trying to reach. You feel me? That you're gonna reach. The bomb is called Beyond Insanity, bro. It sounds like the worst circuit, worst hit circuit ever. Ugh, well, it's all that and more. Well, Let me tell you before we Mucus in. is Mucus wants to come out. <laughs> My mucus is coming. Hey, ambiance. <laughs> Proper built for this, but the building is shaking. <laughs> <laughs> hey, blood! Hey! We are awake! <laughs> well, but you're going back in. Of course, man. I'm built for this. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, we don't we don't fold. It don't fold sometimes to my stupidity, but hey. Wow. And you're standing this one, looking it right in the face. I'm here. I'm here, my guy. Respect. Respect. Yeah, yeah that's a vibe. <laughs> <laughs> so I know you have family in Chicago. You shot Widows in the Windy City and likewise have controversial takes on pizza. Are you thumbs up or thumbs down on Chicago style deep dish? This, this taste is still happening, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's still running, bro. What's going on? <laughs> hey, <laughs> I'm listening. Pizza's just like, pizza's an open sandwich. If you really look at it, it's like cheese. Bro, my tongue is going nuts. <laughs> <laughs> it's like cheese. They just grill the cheese, put some bread on it, cook the bread, tomato. It's not like, it's an open sandwich. <laughs> not its own genre over here. You know what it is? I realized why I felt that way. I had a friend, yeah? A friend used to work at Pizza Hut. He used to do the Friday night shift. So I had to go to Pizza Hut to clear up with him so that I can, so we can go out early. This chicken is going nuts in my <laughs> mouth, bro. <laughs> Hey, to relax, I'm trying to talk. <laughs> I blood. Hey, I got new tears, bro. What's going on? Careful, careful oh, around shit. the eyes too. Yeah, yeah. Shit. You didn't do anything, did no, you? No, 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 I'm cool. But just be careful. Just be careful. Uh, yeah, no. And I used to go pizza. So then I used to see pizzas on a different level. I see the backroom staff and I used to like basically work there but not get paid. And then like, and then I just was like, no, I'm not convinced on pizzas. It's overrated. <laughs> I understand that you had to shed a lot of weight for your role as a boxer in Sucker Punch, and your mom was not too happy about it because you couldn't eat her food anymore. Yeah. What was the Mama Kaluuya dish that you missed the most when you were shedding weight? Oxtail. Oxtail is great. Her oxtail is great. It's fantastic. Five star. I'd strongly advise you to try it. <laughs> well, I would love to. I would love right, to come, pass the come, note along. Come, come to London, I'll get you some oxtail. All right, we're still on good terms, even after you just. Yeah, yeah, that. I'll give you a proper Tupperware. <laughs> you have to take a Tupperware, a Tupperware that's been washed a couple times, not a new one. You know what I mean? Give it a whole shebang. Psycho, what is going on? Damn, bro. Go fuck us up. I know, I know, I know, but the good news is we're almost to the end. That shit's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> bro. So I once heard you say that my favorite thing is to find an artist before they have a Wikipedia page. What would you say distinguishes a fan who recognizes you from Get Out versus someone who knows you as Parking Pa Tueyo? You are hilarious. <laughs> you, you are not, bro. <laughs> nah, bro. That's you, bro. Um, <laughs> doot um, doot doot. Doot 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 doot. <coughs> Parking Pat Way. That's my mom's favorite character I've ever played. When people do that, when they say that, I'm like, oh, what the? On the topic of British comedies, did you have a lasting memory working alongside Rowan Atkinson, the master of physical comedy himself, for Johnny English Reborn? Johnny English Reborn. He is like, never seen anyone work hard. No, I have. But he's like, he works so hard. We did 25 takes of every shot. He works so hard. He's so detailed. He's like methodical about every single thing he does. Just being 21 and being next to him for that many months, I learned so much from him. But yeah, like, I'm in tears, bro. <laughs> well, that is a lovely segue 
to the tenth and final wing. Yeah. My ego says, yes, come on, let's do it, bro. <laughs> do I win a prize? Uh, the glory of... Uh... <laughs> Victoria, do we have any t-shirts? <laughs> <coughs> Maybe a mug or something? So a little dab, yeah? Yeah, a little dab. One bite. Two bites. Come on, man. Let we go. Built for this. <laughs> There's water. <laughs> hey. Ah! Oh, whoa! Man, what the fuck? Hey, my, uh, the water's hot. Where yeah, defeated water? all the wings just to get <laughs> blindsided Aye. by the water over there. But the good news is we're about to roll credits on our Bizarro World lunch with the Wings of Death today. And Jordan Peele, he yeah. tells this story about how you secured your role in Get Out yeah. by nailing the sunken place scene. Five takes, five takes in a row where you had a tear fall at yeah, the exact yeah, yeah. same hate, time in hate, each take. Hate, <laughs> so under these bizarre circumstances, I'm curious from your perspective, what is the key to crying on camera? And do you think that hot sauce could be a performance enhancer for an actor? Yes. <laughs> I can very see now, if you need tears, don't use the um, menthol, use psycho hot <laughs> You tap into, it's like Stanislavski. Sometimes you do emotional memory, sometimes, for me it's color. When it's a mad situation, I remember the color I was wearing. The color would trigger me. And I go straight into that space, bang, go. So I do that. But a lot of times it's like, what else are you going to do? If you feel for the character and you feel for the other person, you're really present in the scene, but A, B, C, innit? That's C. So it's not a performance, it's just a, um, it's an actuality. It's just like, boom, A, B, C, boom, boom. That's the end of the sentence, that's the full stop. So I kind of stay in that. But when you have to do half takes, when you have to do half takes, but you have to be in the middle of it, that's when it's quite difficult. That's when you have like assistance. That's when hot sauce could come in. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you one thing, Daniel Kaluuya. There's not a dry eye in the house after that performance today with come the wings on, of death. Come on. And now there's nothing left to do but roll out the red carpet for you. This camera, this camera, this camera, let the people know what you have going on in your life. Oi, I got to say something to someone because someone introduced me to hot ones. Hey, Ben Schiffer, we made it. <laughs> I told you I'd do this, my guy. You told me to not text you beforehand, so you're gonna see this. Peggy, please keep that in there. That's my guy. <laughs> We're keeping it um, in. But hey, Ben. And then, oh yeah, man, watch Nope. Um, what else you want me to say? Yeah, like, take care of yourself, man. Uh, like, like, cream your ankles. Like, the back of your ankles, cream that. Like, attend to yourself, cream your feet. It's important. You know what I'm trying to say? You've got to do so, certain things. Like, do, like, do it in the dark, do it in private. Hey, just do the right thing in private. That's what man's saying. Hey, this is delirious. This thing made me delirious. I don't even care. Like, I don't even care, but I finished. I completed it. What's no? Great job. Great job. You're a great interviewer, man. You're one of the best in the game. You proper care. It's great. Well, I, I love yeah, that. You know, I do. You know. I feel, it feels and I so. think it's only right. You know, if we're gonna have you jump through this hoop, we got to jump through a couple ourselves. Yeah, right? but you don't have to. You don't have to care as much as you do. You do. You really do. It's really amazing. Oh. Like, even watching your interviews is proper. So thank you for that. Hey, that's mad. Hey, what's going on, Hot Ones fans? Thank you so much for watching today's episode, and I have an announcement to make. The first ever Hot Sauce for Kids, Hot Ones Junior, it just got a little bit hotter. You know the green. Say hello to our brand new hot sauce, the yellow. A super mild hot sauce with sweet tropical heat from mango, pineapple, and scotch bonnet pepper. The yellow, it's ready to party with tacos, nuggies, heck, even ice cream. To get your hands on the newest Hot Ones Junior sauce, visit heatness.com, heatness.com, heatness.com to pick up the yellow 